Hey everybody, welcome to another Ask GSG. Uh, today we have a question uh, from, uh, this is from Low Landlet. It might not even be a question. He's saying, shiny glowing spheres, Nick, right up your alley. Check these out. So I'm, I'm clicking on it. And um, we, uh, it loads up, it plays. And this is classic Grayscale Gorilla right here. This is how I learned everything. This is actually still how I learn everything. That's what it's all about. It's, all, it's what it's all about. The, the best thing about spheres is they always look good, A. Two, um, they are simple dynamic-wise to get moving and do all this stuff. But three, or C, I haven't kept track, um, they are uh, a, f a fake way to learn all the things about Cinema 4D if, if, without learning all the hard things, like the modeling and the texturing and all the crazy stuff. So early on especially, I, I use spheres as a way to jump into cinema and start learning some of the more difficult stuff like dynamics without worrying about... Um, Actually, the actual hard stuff like modeling and texturing. So um, I I just thought it'd be fun to show how simple this is to set up. I know a lot of you probably have seen this before, um, but uh, I figure we'll jump into Cinema and just show you how fast you could do something like this in Cinema 4D. Now, one question before we leave, Chris, because I think this is going to be the big one. Check out this sphere right there. That does not get... Um, that does not get luminant. No, so, they don't all seem to. So be. it's really this um, this uh, this uh, fall off going through it is more like a capsule or something. Yeah, right? I th I think we're actually gonna do this with a random effector. With a random effector. Yep. Instead of shader fall off. You mean oh for the lights? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's let's jump on in and let's time it. Let's time it. See how fast we could get this going. Okay. Ready, Chris? Mm -hmm. All right. Start with a sphere. I'm gonna use the same exact setup, uh, same exact scale as we have. We're gonna add a cloner. I've done this a hundred times, so I'm not going to say too many things. I'm just going to kind of scale this out. I'm going to I'm going to guess. Uh, I'm going to guess one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. I don't know, Twenty by uh, ten by ten. Too many? That's a lot of depth. We probably don't need the. Uh, probably don't need that much depth. Z, so we we'll probably get like four, four depth. And uh, we're going to turn on instances, and we're going to spread these out. We're not going to make them. We're going to make them all pretty tight. We're going to try to make them all want to share the same space. Okay, so now I could go set up my uh, random effector here and gr grab a random effector. It's already moving around. And now we have to go to the random effector um, mode and go to noise, go to indexed. And now we're wiggling around like this. Now they're moving. Now it's a little fast, so we could just slow that down. Okay, now we also want to use the random effector not in noise mode, we actually want to use another new random effector to adjust the scale overall. So here we go, random. Now we can go to this random and go turn off position, go to scale, and now their scale was you know way like crazy. They also, alternatively, we could just drop another sphere in here and make this one like a third of the size or, or, or less, like real teeny, okay? Now we can adjust both of those with this random scale and say, let's be what, 0.5 maybe? Is that too mm -hmm. much? That's about right. I like it. Let's go around there. Quickly, let's add another small one to the mix. We're just making less big ones, okay? And this one's going to be super tiny. This one's going to be like 15. I think there were a lot of little, like little ones moving around in yeah. there. Um, so that's the general scale. I'm also going to add another one because the scale is moved, but now it's also pulsating. Some of these are getting bigger and smaller over time. So how do you do that? You grab another one, MoGraph, random effector. This one's all about the move scale. This one's about the scale. This, what, the scale. this one's about the position. Okay. Now this one's actually going to move the scale. And we're going to say uniform scale, and we're going to move this. And then we have to set up that movement, noise, indexed. Okay, now they're pulsating. But they're pulsating too much. We could slow that down. We could say 30%. Okay, so that's the general move. That's how, that's how we get our moving sphere. So now we don't want them to touch, no touching. What do we do now? We go on the cloner. We can do this all with one tag. We go to our simulation tag. We go to rigid body. Our rigid body tag allows everything to be dynamic. We can go to uh, um, force. Now let's just show the difference. We're gonna hit play. And it's all going to move together. So first of all, it's just a falling as a dynamic object. So the first thing we have to do is tell this tag to go uh, look and inherit the tag to children. Okay. So now let's play. 
It's going to calculate that first frame, and that actually did not work. Uh, I think we uh, uh, do we have to turn off render instances? Or, we will one or, way or the other, but yeah, I think instead of instead of rendering instances, which we don't want to do, instead I'm going to copy this to all three uh, all three of these and say none, and that's just going to fix it right away. So now we're going to calculate. Here we go. First frame always takes the longest, and then it's going to play and explode. Okay, that's not what we want. What do we do? We go into our tags and we go to force. We say follow position. Okay. I'm going to turn this really high. So now we're going to explode and check it out. Now we got undulating spheres here. They're moving in and out. And even this follow position might be a little, little heavy. Okay. I'm going to move up our move scale. I'm going to say, let's scale more. Let's really, you're moving up and down a little bit more. Maybe speed it up, get a little bit more movement. There we go. I think we're good. Yeah. Right. So here's where uh, I'm going to set this real quick to 16.9. I'm going to give us a full frame here, and I'm going to give um, uh, Chris the, the the gears to show you how to set up the light going through. And I think you you say you're going to use a random effector, Chris. I am. Uh, I'll throw a. Um, yeah, actually, you set up the shader, and I'll do the reflection and the final render. Um, actually, the random effector wouldn't push it all the way. Hmm, a couple different ways to maybe approach this. Hmm. Because we want, like, I feel like we'd have to do a double. I, it would take a lot longer to do the fancier setup, uh, which I kind of want to avoid. Let's get a camera here. No, we, we ignore it. Uh, but the basic idea for this part is going to be we want to add another effector, and it can kind of be any. I almost want to. Can't we just use a plane effector? We can totally just use a plane just, effector. To just turn a light on and off? So uh, here's going to be the basic idea. We're going to make a. And we don't even need the material yet. We want to affect the color of these clones, and we're going to have to turn off the render instances to see this, unfortunately. But um, the plane effector should already be affecting everything. We don't want it to be on position, but we do want the color to be on. And are we going to be able to get feedback from that on these uh, default colors? Hopefully. Uh, transform. Let's get the color down. Those colors aren't changing. Why shouldn't those be showing up uh, colored? Maybe we should put the material on there right away. So I am just concerned with the luminance channel. So let's just worry about that one. We're going to go into MoGraph. We're going to go to our color shader. And the color shader is going to be based off of the color of the object. So with any luck, we have our plane effector. So they're black. And now you can see the plane effector is actually colorizing them white. Thumbs up. So that's working well. We just we need the shader on there. So uh, here's, here's what I think we're going to do. We're going to be able to use signal on here too. I'm going to set this to a linear fall off. And it's going to be based off the Y position. So it's transitioning upward. I'm going to give it a full fall off. And it probably needs to be a decent amount bigger. So now you can see we've actually got that full transition from you know white to black as we go through it. And I can pull it up and down and whatnot. Um, but I'm actually going to go down and draw us a little spline. And now we're actually coloring just the center point. And if we want the we, like, so and what's cool here is we I also act, we, don't be careful though because I don't want those front ones to to glow. I don't want the frontmost ones to glow. So I need a volume instead of a fall off. Hmm. Can we do that? Uh, no front one, so we, we actually like a want box. a box. Yep. So we want a box, and we're going to pull the box backward a little bit so we don't quite get the forward most yep, ones. exactly. But we need to make this a lot wider so it does affect everything. And I guess we should pull our fall off back a little bit. Oop, and I guess it needs to be deeper. X, Y, Z. So give it a decent amount of Z. Of course, that transition is pretty strong now. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I guess we could do something like that. Like we, we don't we don't need a ton of them illuminating. Perfect. Yeah, that should work. And as we crank these handles, we should be able to like kind of make the transition more or less harsh. So we could actually even that second point here, and now we have a lot of them peaked. So we're going to kind of quickly get to white, but there will be some transition. Well, I think though, with the with the um, box, you don't need the transition. The spline. Oh well, no. What, well, that's actually actually that's true. This this was more relevant when it was linear, so we can actually just uh, uh, reset that to default, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah with, without the box, yeah, it was, over it through yeah, there. arcing up and down was relevant when it was linear, but now it's not. So we can just pull this uh, to our position so that the boom everything's illuminating Perfect. except I for love the front those little gray ones. So now, um, now remember the only thing you remember is we have to do this on the dynamic ones, not this one. That that is true. Um, so why don't we, yeah, why don't we go and frame forward a little bit? Okay, there's kind of our, our overall scale. 
So we want to go to about this position, which is about negative. Well, we got this parameter. Anyway, I'm going to use signal here because signal. This is what signal is built for. I'm going to add signal, and we're going to be controlling the y position of our point effector. And we want to transition through, and I think we want that to just be linear. So yep. I'm going to set that to a linear line, and it's going to start. Uh, I want this to start at our 500, and I think we just want to go to the inverse of it. So we'll just do positive. We yep. might need those numbers to be a little higher. Uh, and now we can set that down to something like, uh, I'm not sure what number we want exactly. I'm going to say 45, and I'm going to tell that to loop, which means as soon as it gets to the end, it goes back to the beginning and just repeats forever. So we should be able to hit play. That's going to travel up through the entire object. We might need less Y fall off, but you see it even before the animation, end of the animation, jumps down and then starts transitioning back up again. So that's pretty much exactly what we want there. Um, yeah, I think that's well, I think, yeah, it's too big. The, it's too tall. That's fall off yeah. now. You could, you could uh, adjust. We need our uh, Y to start pinching down. So now we just get that little stripe. Yeah. And it's still the same thing. This will travel up through it and then I travel say, up uh, through it again. What I would say is uh, thicken the box and then make the uh, uh, the transition uh, longer. So now well, it's... Well, that's the trick with the fall off on the cube, though, is like we're, transit we're pulling in the sides and the top and the front and back all at the same time with a single fall off. So we're really... Oh, I see. We're, like it's well, it's we, not just up and down. I think we have a little bit if we if we shrink it, um, but it looks pretty good. Let's see what that looks like. So, boom, boom. we should get this. That's yeah. cool. And we can, and, and you know now with signal we can just have that repeat you know faster or slower. That can be going really quick through there. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it does seem like like I'm pushing further than we have to now because of the transition. So I can do like 400. So now it should have less dead time in the middle. Oh, it just goes so, back through. Yeah, and all, all, the only thing I'm controlling right now is the luminous channel, so now you can do whatever you want on top of that. Cool, so everything's set to go. We can just find a cool frame to texture everything with, something like that. And uh, from here, because we're using a, a luminous texture, uh, because we set this up with the color shader here, now I can just add it right in this uh, bit and just add like a basic reflection. So real simple uh, layer Fresnel and just get your basic Fresnel going. And now your, uh, oh, you also want to turn off your um, default light. So you can go to options, default light. And now you're only going to get reflections on the spheres that are from the, the lit ones. Where this is actually a, a kind of a brighter, brighter one. Um, so let's start low, see how the, the black ones look. There you go. So now you have black with the reflections. And I actually think um, even a little bit glossier might might be nice so just cranking up those reflections to really see some of those bright ones um you can also fake the uh brightness of the trans uh luminance by saying add um no multiply right you want to multiply those by even a brighter number oh yeah so that's just going to give us brighter lights so instead of cranking the transparent or instead of cr cranking the reflection to get that look you could set this back to a normal number and you just make it brighter. So now as it's going through, it's just kind of basically shining brighter and giving us nicer reflections. And I think you might be able to even just change the color here too, right? You just like change it to a, a, oh, yeah. a color. And then that will uh, change not only those, but all the other ones ramping in and out of it. So look at there, something something different. Yeah, that's um, that hot. Kind of cool, let's see. Let's see what blue looks like. Ooh, blue's sexy. I like the blue one. Uh, the last thing you want, uh, nope, the next thing you want to do is uh, do a, a set up your render. We'll set up a real small one just so we can see it in action. Uh, 500, and uh, we'll save, uh, doesn't matter, and uh, we'll current frame, we go all frames, right? And, um, oh, I was gonna tell you, anti-aliasing, right? We wanna crank this up. So you're, you're gonna see with sharp reflections like that, you always wanna go to best or use the physical render. Uh, in this case, we could just do that. Um, and now you're gonna see a lot smoother reflections. And uh, let's just do the first, uh, whatever, how, many, how long is this? Um, it's just 90 frames right now. How long is this thing going? Let's just do it. Uh, let's just render, and uh, we drop the cores, right? So it's not yep. gonna mess if, with our stream. Sorry, Chris, you always know the keyboard command and I always forget it. So we might wanna move it back a little bit. It looks like it's still catching the front, um, but uh, that's just a, thing that's real that's fun <laughs> i'm gonna slow that down definitely so his is his are moving a little bit more is slowly kind of undulating right there so we're just gonna dial the <laughs> ours is a disco party dude yeah 
I dig it though. Oop, let me get you out yep. of it. I'll, I'll never remember that keyboard command for some reason. So all I'm going to do is slow this down. I think it was more like uh, more like half the speed for the light was probably pretty good. And just so we could judge the uh, scale of uh, everything here, what I want to do is um, turn off dynamics uh, just for a minute. And you can do that by clicking in here, going to dynamics, and just turn it off. It's still on. Click. OK. So now. You're just going to get the movement, and I think we have the right movement. We're just going to crank it up. I'm going to move the uh, I'm going to move the parameter up a little bit higher for these spheres here. So I'm going to try like 200, and now they're going to move a little bit more. Uh, might have to slow that down, uh, but now that's going to allow us to when we turn our dynamics back on. Uh, I've learned my lesson with <laughs> some of those things. I'll pause it for a second. Now they're just going to move a little bit more. Look at that. That's pretty cool. And uh, are we back on our camera? Or are we still far, further out? So I think it's. I think we're fine. Okay. So one last uh, test here. One hundred percent. And uh, keyboard command is R. Is it R? Control tab. Dang. Why can't I remember that? Control tab. Control tab. I had. I had to do it just to remember. Wow, that looks pretty cool. Um, real simple, classic, uh, <laughs> classic GSG. If I were to do redo this, which uh, we should probably end this one, um, <clears throat> I would uh, probably slow the whole thing down. Oh, definitely. Like right there, just like I tested, 15 frames a second. That looks a lot nicer. I'd slow the movement down of the um, control tab. Control tab. There we go. I would control. I would slow the movement down of uh, this thing again, probably. Uh, maybe even the full 90 maybe yeah. the full 90 for this one and then go to the position and just scale their movement down really slow um, and maybe pull the brightness back a little bit because I feel like it's um, it's just it's cranking so fast to white and I would play around a little bit more with our uh, fall off so um, I don't know if there's a way to do that other than just scale it maybe just scale it up a little bit so that's in our plane fall off and we could just mess with the scale a little you're saying more or less fall off is, is going to give us more or less of that. And then we could just push it forward a little bit more. And let's go ahead and play. Bloom, bloom, bloom. That's pretty fun. That is pretty fun. Kicking a render off. And uh, I think that's uh, that's it for that one. Try to make it a fast one. Um, and uh, and time. So how'd we do? Uh, 15 minutes? Yeah, about 15. That's uh, a little longer than I thought, but um, I think uh, I think that is really the core. That's really the core. I think if um, I think that would be that would be the ultimate test. I'll tell you what that is. I'll tell you why this this kind of uh, effect meant a lot to me to get going. It's kind of like it's kind of like the 10 year old kid test. Like if you if your nephew is over and he's like, what do you do all day? Like what the heck do you do as a job? You pull up a, a cinema and you go, watch how easy this is. And you and you can make Sphere move around and blink lights and t spell his name out with confetti and do whatever. That's that's why cinema became so cool to me. Was where you'd be like, let's model an elephant. That's gonna take three hours. Right. A and he's like, I'm out of here. He's like, I'm gonna go play Lego. With this, you're like, well, watch, that's a smart kid. Watch this. Boom. Like that's how fast we could get, you know, some spheres up and up and wiggling. Um, so that that's just the fun part to me. That was almost a little silly. It's like, that's that's this is. It's so basic. It's so basic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the first grayscale gorilla tutorial. But I think it's I think it's important to see like how simple that stuff is to set up. God, I'm obsessed with that. I don't know why spheres are so amazing. Um, anyway, that was it. Uh, thanks for watching and um, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, if that was a question. And uh, we'll see you in another Ask GSG. Bye, everybody. Bye.